Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to give a brief summary of the good stuff and the not so good stuff on my sort of initial use on Moss Series 3D Analysis. I've only been briefly playing around with it and I kind of just wanted to give my sort of initial impressions just to see how quickly it was to sort of pick up and go. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so I would say that the modeling process in Moth series is pretty quick and intuitive. I personally quite like modeling in grid lines as it gives you quite a lot of control. And the way that you can add, delete and manipulate grid lines in Moth series is pretty intuitive. Modeling columns and beams in Moth series is also very straightforward. Uh, you do everything up in the create drop down menu. You can either kind of click on grid line intersections or you can drag over multiple parts of the model so that it inputs it automatically and then you can kind of delete the ones you, you don't need. Modeling beams is very similar to modeling columns, it's very very straightforward. I think the best functionality is the fact that you can toggle uh, to release the ends. In a lot of other software you have to release the ends after you've actually modeled the beams. There are some additional toggles which you can turn on or off to help you speed up the process. I was still playing around with it, but basically instead of dragging between columns, you can drag, say, the entire elevation and it will create intersections for you at column locations. Like with any modeling software, you just need to be a bit careful to make sure that you're not creating a continuous beam over a column when you're not supposed to. So just take your time and you know, do what you need to do to make sure that you, you've modeled the right thing. Adding floors in Moth series is, again, really, really straightforward. Um, what you can do is just click the individual bays, which it automatically detects for you, or you can drag across a multiple of different bays and it will um, add the floors in for you. Modeling bracing is really, really easy, and it's even quicker than most of the other software I've done. In other software, you have to click between floors, but say you've got a completely full story height worth of bracing, you can click from the bottom all the way to the top, and it will automatically put the brace bays in for you. The wind analysis on Moss series is probably one of the easiest and quickest ways I've seen it being done. I'm very familiar with how Tekla does theirs, and I thought that was already pretty quick, but Moss series is even quicker. The process of setting your site location is pretty similar to other pieces of software with wind type analysis software. But the best thing about Moss series is instead of having to create um, individual wind panels like you kind of have to do on other pieces of software. My series just clicks a button and it will create all your elevations, all your roof panels for you, which is just a ridiculous time saver because you're not having to model additional wind panels just for you to create um, the shell of the building. It's also really easy to display the wind directions, the wind pressures, coefficients, uh, wind zones if you need to work that out. It's all laid out really, really clear when you sort of click and play with the toggles for the displays. The automatic load combination generator is pretty good as well. I think the best thing about it is that it allows you to preview all the combinations it's going to generate. I'm normally quite opposed to doing auto generation combinations, normally because it can generate a lot of useless or over the top um, load combinations. Having a lot of load combinations generated can slow down your model significantly. However, I've found that even though I've auto generated all these combinations, the models, you know, analyzing and designing is all is all still pretty quick. The steel design element for Moss series is really easy to do and there's a lot of options for you to tweak and change things to suit your project. I'm only showing the steel non composite design. I've played around with the composite design and I to be honest, could not get it to work. I think I need to revisit it and look through some tutorials and guides. I've not played around with concrete design yet, um, so I'll probably have to do that in another video. You can design simple buildings like this really, really quickly in Moss series. You basically click a button and it designs every element for you. I've not actually set the model up properly because I haven't set up design groups, so each element is basically a different size. But if you set it up properly at the start, you can sort this out really quickly. It highlights really clearly which elements are failing and it's also really easy to reanalyze and redesign. 
I'd also say that this speed of Master Series and how it does its analysis and its design is pretty quick given how many low combinations I've actually put into this model. Okay, so let's move on to the not so good stuff. Inputting member loads and point loads I find really, really cumbersome and I really don't like it. If you want to apply a UDL to a member, you have to click the member, click apply UDL, check the right direction and then input the value. And then you've got to copy this specific load to all the members you want to apply it. And in my example, I'm trying to add a perimeter load because I'm trying to apply a wall load to all the uh, perimeter beams. And you can kind of see that it's going to take quite a long time just to copy across to you know click all the individual beams. Like you could drag them, but then it's not obvious which which loads you've applied to the beams. The only way I've been able to visually see the loads I've applied is by going into this frame loads tab. Whilst it is quite useful, it's also really hard to use, I think. Like it's not very intuitive at all, and you have to make sure that you've set up all the right load cases. Like I've just applied a UDL to all the perimeter beams, but I, for the life of me, cannot get to see it visually just to see that perimeter beam. It's got, you know, all the other loads which I've applied to decompose as a UDL. So the long winded workaround which I've found is to actually change the load case of the perimeter to say D2 or D3, which is a completely different dead load load case, set up that load case and then you'd be able to only see that UDL which you've applied, which seems like a very long-winded way of doing something. Okay, so applying the static support is actually very straightforward. However, when I've created this model and I've you know added floors, it's put supports at every floor, which is obviously incorrect. So it's fairly straightforward just to reset um, all the supports so that I have no supports. So as you can see, I've got all the displacement fixed and I've got rotation about Y also ticked. So I'm thinking that when I'm applying these supports, that's what's actually gonna happen. But what I didn't realize was it didn't apply it. And when I went to run the analysis, it was throwing up a massive instability error. Because I thought I had fixed in rotation about Y, I didn't come to check this straight away. I thought it had something to do with the beam releases, but in actual fact, it was to do with the support. This one's probably a little bit nitpicky, but since I've already said that I'm applying um, a floor, I would have assumed that it would recognize that adding a concrete floor it would automatically lead to being um, a diaphragm or at least give me the option just to say yeah that floor is a diaphragm but instead you have to reapply or re-input the fitness and then you also have to know the Young's modulus of that material like I know it but some other people might not you would have thought you know instead of having to input it manually that there'd be like a drop down for you to pick and choose from in addition to having to actually input the value this is a minor comment and probably something that they could probably add in quite quickly. Again, this is pretty minor, but um, hopefully something which they could probably implement quite quickly. I've never used a software where it doesn't output the actual force in a diagram form. Like it does it for shear, bending, deflection, like you would expect. But in all the software I've ever used, it's all, there's always been an actual force diagram. In this, it only displays a text value. And when I first clicked on it, I thought there was something wrong with my model because it wasn't displaying a diagram, which is what I was looking for. So overall, I actually found picking up this bit of software pretty straightforward. Um, there wasn't a lot to learn. Um, I did go through some of the tutorial videos and read through some of the guides, and, and I think that's a particular strength that Mastery has is that their guides and tutorials are plentiful and they are pretty good at explaining stuff. I guess the slight downside is it's not as easy to pick up and go as I kind of found using say Tekla. However once I kind of got going and started getting the feeling of how Mastery series does do stuff um, it wasn't too bad. Like with any software there's going to be preferences to using one over the other and in particular, Moth series, there's some good things which it does 
way better than Tekla, but there's also things which Tekla does better than Master Series. And, you know, you just got to find your balance. You know, you got to find what works for you, uh, what price point works for you. Um, they do very similar things, um, if I was to compare the two. But I think overall, Master Series is, is pretty good, pretty easy to pick up, and the support that they give you is very, very good. So, so far, I've only actually tested the steel non-composite design. I will be playing around with concrete design, and I've had a very, very quick go at the composite design, but it did not feel as easy to use as the non-composite design. So I'll probably need to refer to the tutorials and guides to uh, learn how actually how to do that. I think also another great strength about Master Series is their support is really quick at answering questions. So if you're trying to follow a guide or a video and you still don't really understand, just ping them an email and they respond to you really, really quickly. And they might even do like video calls and screen share just to show you quickly how to resolve your problems. I think their average response time is something like within like 24 hours, um, which is way faster than Tecla. Like sometimes Tecla, you can be waiting for days or even like up to a week to get um, an issue resolved or even just to hear back from them. If you think that Master Series is something that you wanna try, uh, just feel free to go onto the website and download it and start the free trial. I think, I think you get like 14 days of free trial, which is pretty good. Um, enough to sort of dabble and get a feel to see whether it's um, right or not for you. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.